so before coming out here, I was kind of, I was a wild card. I was kind of a mess. And without her really having to say anything, I just kind of, I don't know, kind of changed. Like she, it's the corniest thing in the book. She made me want to be better. Aww. Yeah. Don't be weird. You're so cute. <laughs> you really like me. <laughs> no, he's, no, he's like, okay, bye. <laughs>show we have b and brady and we have actually done a couple photo shoots with this couple and i think that they're so fun and if you've ever seen some of our photo shoots with them you can see the clear chemistry that these two have and that's cute little puppy in the background oh yeah we got we might have dogs running in and out (laughs) but so i thought it'd be really fun to bring this couple on and kind of learn about them and also some of their relationship strategies maybe is the best way to say it and they also have one really interesting thing that I think is fun for our listeners to learn about which is their annual vow renewal and so we're kind of just going to dive into it from there all right okay cool so actually just like the the ultimate icebreaker question how did you guys meet so I had just moved to Vegas back in February of 2018 it was my second day in Vegas and being that I am a complete nerd, I went to a Magic the Gathering tournament at Little Shop of Magic, which happened to be right next to Sushi Coma. And okay. so I figured afterwards, I was like, I'm going to go get sushi. So my second day in Vegas, I walk in to get sushi and there's one seat left at the bar. So I sit down at the bar and... I happen to be her. sitting next to him. It's, really? It was... Yes, it was very kismet, very like meet cute style. Um, yes, uh, it was kind of funny because obviously like we're both fairly tattooed people. One of my tattoos started getting really itchy and I was talking about it, I guess, fairly loudly. And so he kind of <laughs> leaned in and decided to like offer his advice on how to like take care of it. And, and then just kind of like went back to doing his own thing. And I was like, oh, no, we're talking now. We're, we're going to be talking now. Um, so basically we invited him to hang out with us downtown later that night. And where'd you invite me? I invited you to don't tell mama. No, you invited me. I invited you to Artifice Artifice. first. Yes. I got an Uber to Artifice, which at the time somebody had crashed into the breaker and it was on fire. All the lights are out. (laughs) And my Uber driver literally goes, do you want me to stay with you here for a second? Like, it seems unsafe. And I'm like, yeah, sure. She's not there yet. I wasn't, I hadn't, I hadn't arrived yet. I was on my way. So this stranger I had just met my second day in Vegas after moving from small town, Michigan, uh-huh. pulls up in a car with guys in the back seat, swings her passenger door open and goes, get in. Get in. Yeah. So, so, uh, like, yeah, okay. so instead of, instead of getting murdered, I got married. <laughs> got it. Got it. Those are really the two out. options. Those yeah. are the two options you really have at that point. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we we ended up going to Don't Tell Mama, which is a a bar that we now obviously are extremely fond of. It's a singing piano bar and I'm a singer as well. So I sang a song and he was audibly impressed because I heard him like, what is going on while I was singing? Uh And I mean, basically it was kind of just, he kind of just stuck with us. He was a part of our friend group because I knew that he really didn't know anybody. So introduced him to all of our friends and Everyone seemed to like him and, you know, eventually I guess we couldn't stay friends. So now I get to be his best friend forever. (laughs) (laughs) So be where are you from? I'm originally from New York. I've, I've been in Vegas since 2011. Okay. By way of Reno. I went to UNR for a little while. My family retired out here. I'm the youngest of three. So after I left the nest, basically they were like, all right, well, time to go retire and move somewhere hot. Got it. Got it. So yeah. your family lives here and you're you're from Michigan, I heard you say. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So that was 2018, you said, yeah? 2018 that we met, yeah. So then how long after that did you actually start kind of like, okay, this is more than friends or... I think it was like, it was later that year. It was you November, like right? Yeah, yeah. Nine months in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then how long after that did you get married? Okay. So we started dating in 2018. We got engaged the following year. Rather than doing the math, we got married 10, 10, 2020. Yes. October 10th, oh, you were one of those. We were one of those. <laughs> yes. We were a COVID, COVID we were a COVID couple. couple. Got it. So where did you get married? 
Uh, we got married at Green Valley Ranch. You did uh, out in Henderson. We got married in one of the one of their villas. Yeah, and yes. so that was a very small wedding, obviously. Yes, and so it for was, literal yeah. legal reasons, <laughs> yeah. it, was a, it was a good time. But it was really fun. Yeah. And now I actually work at Green Valley Ranch. You do? Yes. Oh, yeah. fun! We do weddings at Green Valley Ranch too, a little bit. Very it's cool. A beautiful spot. It's a great. It is, great, it is pretty. Great yeah. property. Yeah. So okay, so about two years then yeah, yeah so we're going on our third year this coming october oh fun gosh yeah 2020 actually doesn't seem that long ago but it when you really does three years ago i'm like oh fuck so how did you know you were the one each other do you want to go first or do you want me to go first well yours is probably once i stopped annoying you you were like oh i like him <laughs> partially yeah I just think you took more of an interest in my emotional like well-being than anyone I had ever even known before even just as my friend and so like that's something that's really important to me as somebody who like deals with a lot of anxiety and things of that sort like having somebody that not just recognizes it but also learns how to help me through things like that and how to help me organize my mind and like works around all of my weird I would say quirks but you know you know what we're you know what we're really trying to say all the strange things that I do and kind of just takes it in stride and doesn't see me as a problem uh -huh. um which is something that I've always been like self-conscious about especially with romantic partners that I'm like going to be too much for them okay or too complicated for them and the fact that he was just like nah this is fine like I don't but whatever we'll just we'll just find a new way to do things or I'm proud of you for getting through this like just simple words and things like that was just absolutely monumental to me and it was just really really important that he understood me on that emotional and on that intellectual level and he's really pretty so that also helps a lot <laughs> <laughs> it helps <laughs> go ahead feel free to, feel free to tag <laughs> on your version up to that <laughs> um so for me i guess it's kind of two two different things the first one being as we mentioned prior to the prior to the recording we have both been married in the past um, and mine left me with a lot of trust issues okay and there was something about B that when I met her there was no doubt in my mind I've never one moment questioned whether or not I could trust her uh -huh. and so there was something about that because I I hadn't had that in years mm -hmm. and then just the fact that there was so before coming out here, I was kind of, I was a wild card. I was kind of a mess. And without her really having to say anything, I just kind of, I don't know, kind of changed. Like she, it's the corniest thing in the book. She made me want to be better. Oh, yes. babe. Don't be weird. You're so cute. <laughs> you really like me. <laughs> no, he's, no, he's like, okay, bye. <laughs> I love that. That's great. So I kind of alluded to, you have another dog? We have three all together. Oh. Yeah. So they'll be, like I said, they'll be popping in and out oh, making little so cameos. So they cute. can't, they can't just sit and lay down. <laughs> Do you, did you have individual dogs and brought them together? Or did you get all these animals together? I had a dog before she's, she's going to be the one that's going to be hiding out the yeah, most because she she's real lazy. She's older now. Okay. So I've had her since I was, I guess, 20 20 oh my gosh I've, since I was 20 years old and then we got the two that you've seen so far we got them together yep. oh fun I love yes that. but he's always had dogs I, I've always grown up with dogs it's like dogs are essential to our household <laughs> yeah actually you know what I, I actually want to kind of go back to the the COVID couple thing because sure. it's like something we're like maybe sort of trying to erase from our memory but I still think there's actually a lot of people that are in that phase and did you you two met each other before so that's helpful Correct. but do you have any thoughts on like how did it work when you were planning your wedding during that time and kind of navigating that and how did you you know decide who to invite if you invited anybody so that um, time because let me elaborate too actually because what we're finding right now from what I'm reading and understanding is that a lot of people actually didn't date during that time. So you kind of met 
before and you were yeah. planning your wedding, but now we're finding that a lot of people didn't date. So there's like actually much there's way less weddings right now because of that two-year span when people really weren't dating. It's really interesting right. to me. So yes, we did meet beforehand. We were already living together before, um, uh -huh. you know, a full lockdown ended up happening. So we had already known each other, all of our habits really well. We were, we were already engaged actually, I think. Yes, we were engaged. We were, we were already engaged and already had deposits down on stuff and everything yep. before so the lockdown. So you did before one lockdown. of those too. And we okay. had already yeah. chose we'd already chosen the date and we loved the date, especially yes. because I'm I'm an idiot. And so it'll be very easy to remember the anniversary. <laughs> 10 10 20 20. It's not yeah. hard to forget. Not hard to forget. Not hard to remember. Yeah. So yeah, so we definitely our wedding plans got interrupted by lockdown by yeah everything shutting down we had like like brady said we had a venue chosen a, a very large deposit put right. down for our date because i don't know if it's an industry thing but they definitely did tell us that because of the numbers and brides love their yes. numbers it was a very popular date so if we wanted to do it we had to act fast and in retrospect that may have been a tactic neither here nor there though we did have our deposits put in on this beautiful beautiful venue all of our plans everything ready to go and then the universe was like nope that's not going to happen. Right. Which small note to any listeners out there. No. If you're planning a wedding, don't tell people, the, the people you're paying, whether it's photographers or whatever, tell them it's for a birthday. Yeah. Don't, don't tell anybody it's a wedding. It's a wedding. <laughs> They'll charge you three times as people much. People hear wedding and they go crazy it's, with pricing. They, they just hear money. Yeah, yeah. I definitely will agree. But yes, yeah, so, so we definitely got a lot of our plans interrupted. So we had to do one of two things. And I remember having this conversation with my parents. And basically they were like, okay, one of two things can happen. Either we can change the date mm -hmm. and push it to next year, which is, I think what a lot of people did, mm -hmm. or we can just basically do like the very small elopement wedding. situation, right. which of course we weren't opposed to, but we found a way to get everyone that we needed there. Right. I don't remember exactly how many people were there. I probably chose to blank that information out of my brain. But it was it was very small, immediate family. Yes. And very close friends. Yes. Everybody, for the most part, we tried to make sure everybody was keeping masks on as much as possible. Well, I made masks. We, yeah, she yeah. made masks for the wedding. I made masks for every guest at our wedding. And luckily, oh. the villa had two sets of giant double doors, so we kept those open the oh, whole time. space so as well. Everything was, you know constantly moving Good, yeah and we can happily report that nobody got sick after our wedding right. nobody got sense. sick at all we got very nice. lucky we got that. very lucky with that people got like hung over sick but definitely yeah, not yeah. not COVID sick <laughs> nice yes see so did you did you have to change your venue or was that was that the original venue? oh yeah no we we absolutely had to change our venue oh, we were not okay. originally at Green Valley Ranch we were originally at another one of the venues here and they basically told us see ya <laughs> Got it. <laughs> it, yeah. it, they they didn't want to give us back our money they didn't want because of course barring supernatural disaster or whatever right. you will call it is in our contract because yeah. who would ever think that a global pandemic would happen right, right but of course they think of it so it's in their clauses so it took us a long long time to get a lot of our money back we still i think technically they didn't they didn't give us all of our money back they started giving us payments yeah and then they yeah. kind of went under so yeah you know what let bygones be bygones. It is what it is. But yeah, it was it was really stressful. I don't do well with immediate changes like that. So got it. That was hard. Because you were already planning it planning before 2020. It sounds like. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, it's definitely interesting from like the because everybody was in chaos during that time. And I'm in the wedding industry and it was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And I do know so many companies in that 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 happened to right or that really are still on the struggling as well and then and then you know just to hear the perspective of somebody that actually went through it on the consumer side and the customer side and it's just it was a really interesting time mm -hmm. yep so. yeah and it was definitely it was a lot of stress that I didn't think I would have to deal with because everyone always says like oh planning your wedding gets so stressful and blah blah, blah. Right. and I was like I'm not I'm a very easygoing person you know, I don't, I don't need things collectively to a T because I'm usually not looking at them, but something like that, where it's like, you can't avoid this problem. It was, it was definitely a lot for me to deal with, Yeah, <laughs> but I we got through it. We got married. We had our date and everything, everything worked out for how it was supposed to work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. 
Well, let's actually dive into the vow renewal idea. Okay. So, so when we first met you, you guys told us that you do or want to do a vow. I don't remember if we shot you and how soon it was actually after your, when I say shot, I mean photograph. Obviously. Um, <laughs> that's really, sometimes I say that. And how soon that was after your actual wedding, because it could have actually been been a while ago now and what you did for your first vow renewal or kind of walk us through that idea and like how you came up with it and what it means to you and yeah give me the details so so the the idea was bees she had the idea prior to me but her ex-husband thought that was stupid so he thought it was corny so i was like well did that when she told me she that he thought it was corny I was like that's stupid I would love to do that (laughs) like why not like that's that's fun yeah so our first one we actually it was on our actual anniversary okay and we actually went back to Green Valley Ranch and got a room there and on the the grand staircase we got remarried by one of our close friends Stephen okay and then just had a little anniversary back at Green Valley Ranch yeah we just went to a nice dinner and hung out and just kind of did our own thing right yeah so it wasn't really like a a big event we didn't really like plan it we just had our friend write a nice little speech my parents were there they just kind of your parents came too yeah well they're local so you know why not drive down it's just you know that they gave us a gift card to dinner so they might as well come come to the wedding so to speak (laughs) yeah I love that yeah and then and then so what it kind of sounds like you don't have to make it like a huge ordeal, but it is something that's kind of like this little sacred moment. Exactly. And it's, I think also, this might sound like a really morbid or dark way of thinking it, but I can be very pragmatic occasionally. It gives us a chance to edit every now and then because I'm just like, you still want to marry me, right? Yeah. You're still you're still good? (laughs) Even after this, this past year of absolute insanity, we're still good? All right, cool, 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 cool. You know, it's it's not a fully realistic thing, obviously, yeah. but we'll, we'll right. see how 2023 goes. See how 2023 <laughs> <laughs> but last year, actually last year, the 2022, I guess, then was the first photo shoot with you guys. Yeah. So that was where we were when we did the alleyway shoot. Yeah. And um, Laura, who is ordained, actually did do a little vow renewal for us. So that was in August. So it's technically like two months before Early. our actual yeah. anniversary. Yeah. yeah. But it was great. And once we had those photos, we kind of just posted them as our anniversary photos. Um, yeah, we got them by our anniversary. If I remember correctly. Yeah. But neither here nor there. We we love we love those kinds of things. Any opportunities we can. So that one was a little bit more official because, like you said, Laura is ordained and yeah. we had photos and it was a whole thing. But yeah, I mean, who knows? We don't have anything necessarily planned for this year. But we usually come up with stuff kind of randomly. I mean, yeah, I'm sure we'll plan, you know, bigger stuff for, you know, milestones, milestone anniversaries. Yeah. But uh-huh. for the most part, we just we make sure, make sure we do it. Yeah. Even if it's something little and silly. It's almost like an anniversary gift to each other. Yeah. A, I love do that. A, do a drive through chapel next year. Drive through chapel would be so fun. I want to get like remarried at all the little chapels or something. I don't know. Go to yeah. like the Taco Bell on the street. Yeah, the Taco Bell Cantina. The, the, we have to go to the Neon Chapel because it's right next to Mama's, yeah. which is where he proposed. He proposed oh, to me at yeah. Don't Tell Mama. That was, was probably it... going to be a question. You're ruining. It. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. That was actually that's perfect timing. Actually, <laughs> what did you did you propose at Don't Tell Mama's? Like the one that was on, is on. Which... So we uh, we used to be on Fremont. I say we because yeah. I do work there. So we used to be on Fremont East. We've now moved up into Neonopolis, which is just literally a hop step away. So at the newer location was where he proposed. We had already moved there at that point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I've been they... to the one that was on the the other when it was in yeah the, the smoky spot. one with the checkered floor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. We met, we spent many a nights there. That's many fun. many a night there. Yeah, they're in. They were already moved over to Neonopolis when I proposed. So, her parents actually surprised me by flying out my best friend to be there for the proposal, and oh. we invited because we, me and her parents invited a bunch of our friends to be there at Don't Tell Mamas. Unbeknownst okay. to me. Yes. Okay. And then they surprised me by flying out, flying out my friend. Double surprise. And <laughs> then they. 
Pigmento, what was, what's your favorite? Musashi. Version? Yes, she's still salty about that. I'm still salty about it. They took me out to <laughs> Musashi prior to the proposal just to celebrate. What is that? It's a... It's a teppanyaki restaurant. Okay, kind of a hibachi grill style. Okay, okay. But very upscale. Our okay, very good friend okay. runs it, owns it, and it's it's phenomenal. So Recommend okay. it highly. So we get to Don't Tell Mamas. We have everybody there, and they had told her, I forget what excuse they used. Mom told me it was a girl's night with her work friends. Yes, and to, to meet us there. And so she was weird. like, so she was like, wear something nice. So she gets all dressed up, comes to meet her mom and her mom's, you know, gal friends at Don't Tell yeah. Mamas. Which like two of them were there. It wasn't even like a thing. <laughs> oh yeah, I had kind of hit around the corner, but I've seen the video where she walks in and she sees everybody and she's going, what are you guys doing I'm like, here? I'm confused. And she especially sees my best friend Zach and from Ohio, and she's like, yes. what, "What's what going on? What's going on?" I was so confused. And Kenny Davison, the piano player, calls her up to the stage. He goes, "Hey, you want to come up here and sing a song?" And she's almost, "You're almost already crying." I'm already almost crying because I'm just, pa- I'm in like, panic mode. What's, what's going oh, on? I'm like anxiety. everyone's looking at me. <laughs> and then, and then I walked in and proposed once she was already on stage. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then what happened? I I mean, and then basically Kenny played a song for us. We danced. They she, put, they brought out a cake. She said yes. I did good, say yes. Okay, good. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I think that was yeah, and then I punched him. And then I punched him for going to Musashi without me. But yeah, then we danced. They they brought out a cake and we basically like just went straight into like an engagement party, just moved right into That's it and so just fun. hung out at the bar. My parents had a huge tab that they were taking care of for everyone, which was incredibly grateful. I'm grateful rather and incredibly generous of them. Um, we hung out, we sang and listened to music all night, which is basically what we love to do. Yeah. We danced, we drank, we ate cake and hung out with our friends. And it was just, it was a really, really like joyous little occasion, even aside from us being engaged. Like I was just really happy to be in that moment oh I'm getting I'm getting emo I'm thinking about it now that was such a nice night <laughs> that was so it's fun. actually that's so nice too because you didn't really necessarily get to have that on your actual wedding day right I mean we did yes and no it was just yeah, it was big, there maybe. was missing pieces you right. know it wasn't yeah. as together as we would like we would have liked it so yeah definitely definitely good memories there for sure yeah I love yeah. that so you don't have any plans for your upcoming vow renewal? Well, no, we have things Not that yet. we would like to do, but nothing set in stone. Nice. Okay. I'll I'll keep my my ideas going in here. <laughs> you guys oh, yeah. put, feel you free need to a photographer to every anytime. year. And you have feel to change your you have to change your hair just a little bit so it looks like you're a different couple every single time. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we did change it from the I last know. time we saw you guys. He yes. cut all his hair off and I have a completely different hair color. I was like, is... the, they no one will ever know that this is the no the one's gonna know. people. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Tell us something that maybe besides of our renewal, obviously that you guys do that keeps things alive. Like, is there any little tricks and tips or things that you've learned over the years, maybe that you'd like to share? I guess one of the things that I did actually recently was, oh, hello, Benny. <laughs> I was, I was just going through cleaning stuff and I found a, a little notepad with a clip. And so I hung it on the wall right next to our door. To, uh-huh. our, to our bedroom and just to just use it to just write little notes to each other not like to be like hey don't forget to do the laundry today yeah, yeah. Like, just like cute like little love notes, notes. Yeah. yeah yeah that's sweet but like I when... couldn't use it for that no uh, no laundry notes but yeah like so we, we do write little notes back and forth to each other just little like just mementos that you would like to say throughout the day but sometimes you don't get an opportunity to right. mm-hmm. and it's nice too when the person comes home and realizes that there's a new note for them um, cause it's just like in a list. It's not like we make it fancy or anything. Yeah. Um, we're like both looking at it right now. It's, 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 it's cute. And I always see it and I always know to check it, which I know I need to write something. It's been like a little while. <laughs> he was the last one to write something. <laughs> Stuff like that for sure. And I also think I'm going to say another thing that you do. I do things too, I swear, but there's another thing that you do that I just, I'm starting to really like. You always bring me snacks. You always I always bring food- snacks. Food is a big love language for me. I grew up in a in an Italian and Puerto Rican family, so food is a very important love language for me. So always making sure I'm fed and always bringing me snacks and treats is definitely one of my favorite things that you do. You know, as far as freshness, because it's not always. 
It's just right. randomly. That's you know? nice. It's yeah. unexpected. Every Friday night you do this, you know? Right. It's right. it's not every Friday night or, you know, or anything like that. And I also think like, I think also keeping like patience with each other. Mm-hmm. Again, like I mentioned, like I deal with a lot of a lot of high stress situations that I put on myself. My life is very beautiful and wonderful. I can't say anything, anything different, but I put myself in a lot of stressful positions and just having somebody who's just fully along for the ride. Like that to me is still refreshing. I'm sure that that's a normal relationship thing to have, but as a person who never really had that to me, that is just a really just refreshing of him being like, it's all good. It's all going to be fine. You're going to get it done. I'm going to help you with whatever you need. And we're going to keep going. And I'm just like, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but as far as keeping, keeping like the spark alive and stuff like that, this is more of a her thing that she, she mentioned to me. And I've been, I've been trying to be better about doing it is taking her on actual dates. Oh yeah. yeah. Not just saying like, Hey, where do you want to go to eat tonight? But right. actually like planning something my own and, and being like, Hey, you know, pick out pick out something nice to wear tonight you know we're going to a we're going to a nice dinner and just yep just know. on a random thursday like yeah. It, it's yeah it's not like oh it's saturday night and we're gonna go out it, it'll be a very like random occasion kind of thing which i love also i really like our outfit dates where we will allot a, a certain amount of money to oh, yeah. yeah like we'll say like 30 bucks right it doesn't have yeah. to be crazy 30 bucks and we'll go to Target or Kohl's or the thrift store or somewhere where you can buy clothing, Walmart, wherever. Yeah. And we buy each other an outfit with the and allotted we, amount of money. We split up. Yep. And you have 30 to $40 to pick out an outfit. And yep. then we have to wear that outfit on a date that night. Yep. Oh my gosh. That's fun. Yeah. So you we've pick done a, it. like kind of an idea or a theme ahead of time or, or nope. you, anything you, just, you want. We just, go to a place and then whatever outfits we pick out then we choose a venue or a restaurant that right. suits our outfits so if it's something that's like we have like he gets me a dress or if I get him like a button-down shirt that I can find then we'll do something a little more fancy but if it's just like you know like one day like the you got me the pair of shorts and like a NASA sweatshirt so we just probably went to a bar after that you know nothing yeah. too crazy I had to shop for her in the little boys section for that NASA t-shirt yeah because <laughs> we were we're women's in... t-shirts don't don't yeah, suit me don't as much even... they're they're yeah. usually they usually have weird phrases on them or something like it's That's wine true. o'clock somewhere yeah. like, i'm not gonna wear that i'm not oh, gonna wear that God. i like space and unicorns and uh, the other one was a pokemon shirt yes yes it was a, it was a blue pokemon shirt that says all my friends are pokemon and it has all the starter pokemon on it mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. I love that. That's actually a really, really clever and cute idea. Yeah. And it's, it's nice too, because I think some couples would try to sabotage each other and buy something really frumpy and ugly, right. which is honestly could be really fun right. to be like, no, like, especially if we do a thrift store one, right. you know, where you can literally get anything, including like eighties wedding dresses right. for 10 bucks. You know what I mean? Like we could really, we could really make it a lesson in pride. <laughs> right. But I think it would be fun exactly to just go out and do something absolutely insane. I think it would be fun to do a photo shoot where we like thrift each other the clothes for a photo shoot. That would be funny. Ideas. Write that down. I know. I know. I was like, hmm, maybe we can make that happen. <laughs> Ashlyn, what do you think? <laughs> Let's go to the thrifting and then get some tattoos afterwards or something. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Um, I would love to do that okay but yeah that's definitely uh it's definitely a way to you know just keep things fun and also I get to see like what he likes to see me in and what I like to see him in you know we get to be like Ashlyn's reacting with the laughing crying face I love that (laughs) just uh getting the opportunity to like be like I would like to see you in this color and be like I never even thought to wear this color you know what I mean or whatever the case might be right so it's fun what do you two both do for work actually so I'm a hairdresser and a okay. bartender. Okay. Uh, I also front a band. It's not quite a business, but we, we do make, we can make a little bit of money. So I do, I do more of the creative work. And I'm, I work armed security. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? No, I thought you were a bartender. No. <laughs> I used to be. I used to oh, bartend. Okay. okay. Back in the day. Yeah, that was when I was. Not even here. 20, 23. Oh, okay. 10 years. 
That's so cool. So do you guys have like schedules that you're not always like not a traditional schedule? Or do you Yes and no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm usually home by 11:30 p.m. PM. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm home by 11:30 at night and I still get I get Sunday Mondays off, so at least Mondays if she's not super busy at the salon, we it's get usually a shorter day for me. A, okay. Most of the day together and we at least get a a night together and then Sundays she works at the bar. So, so Sunday so during the I day. During the day with her. Yeah. Got it. So it sounds like what I love, just I'm going to tell you what I think, <laughs> what I sure. hear and what I love is that you're like spontaneously simple. And I think that that's so lovely. Like it's I don't agree with that. so like you don't have to overcomplicate things, but you're still adding that extra spice by being spontaneous and stuff. But what like I'm curious about that that schedule, though, because, you know, that can be challenging if you don't see yeah. each other or you're like B's got this and are you at the salon and are you at the bar and are you doing the band and yeah it can be challenging but I mean it's it makes the time that we have together even better yeah and the fact that we know you know we're young we're doing what we have to now to move into a life that's going to be you know, easier a little easier yeah. and where we can pick our schedules a little bit better down the road mm-hmm. and so we we know that we're at an age and time right now where you know it's necessary to make those sacrifices to have the life that we want down the road yeah and so long as we stay understanding of that it it makes it easier yeah yeah that that's definitely a good point too is that we're staying understanding of it too because it's very easy for people to say you know like oh you know so and so is always working and buddy buddy buh but the fact is that like you have to work to get what you want you know just like Brady said like we're we're sacrificing the small time that we do have and making the most that we do have out of it. And just, you know, just continuing to keep that goal and that vision in mind of like, this is for, this is for the both of us. It's for the betterment of both of us, no matter what we're with each other forever. We have all the rest of our lives, Mm -hmm. you know, for as long as we will be here on this plane, at least to spend with each other. And we're lucky that we do get, we do get the chunks of time in between. Like today is my day off. I'm fully off today. You have to work later today, but at least we have th- this morning to hang yeah. out. Maybe if he wakes up early enough before work, we can go get lunch or something, right. things of that sort. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Well, do you have any other things you'd love to share with our audience about keeping things alive? Any fun ideas? I didn't think about, well, not think about, I just thought about it. It's not really about keeping things alive, but it's more of like a fun fact. I don't know if it's a fun fact, but remember how we said earlier at the very beginning that we met at a sushi restaurant? Yeah. We both love sushi. We're big, big sushi eaters. So before we weren't even engaged yet, huh? We had to have been. I think we got engaged later that year. You might be right. I can't be fully certain. So don't quote me on my timeline, but... It potentially before we were even engaged, because I know we got them as friends. We got matching tattoos. As, as friends. As as friends, basically. I know that we decided that it was going to be as friends because we're... when people get matching tattoos as a couple, it's usually like the kiss of death. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so yeah. we were already dating. But... We were already dating for sure. Uh-huh. For sure already dating. The whether or not we were engaged, the the timeline is confusing to me but yes we did get matching sushi like salmon nigiri tattoos uh, and so every year near that i clawed you <laughs> every year near our dating anniversary we try to go back to sushi coma what every year near we go there like once a week i'm just saying no matter what we try to go back <laughs> during that time i know we go there a lot around that time but as well as we make it a point to do it not during our dating anniversary i'm sorry on the on the anniversary of when we met Got uh, we try to go back there for that time and uh, it's also his his vague anniversary as i call it so i'd like to celebrate that with yeah. him too yep. but yeah when when i when i line up all of the things after learning everything about him and the way that he got here and what i was doing in my life after mm-hmm. i lined up everything there's so many reasons why we should have missed each other that night right. there are, there's more reasons against it right than there is for yeah. it because when you go just just down to the timing of it i we were getting ready to leave i was we were finishing up our meal and he happened to come in right as we were like i said basically getting our check right and 
he ended up leaving the tournament early to eat food. Right. And he also canceled his Uber because he saw the sushi restaurant. He was about to leave, leave, and then happened to walk in right at the time that I was getting ready to leave. It, it was just like too many things. Well, and so, that you engaged with each other. I mean, so many times people, they're, I, I, you were alone, right, Brady? Yeah. Like I was just listening to a podcast and it's like, put the phone down, go to a restaurant and people will actually communicate <laughs> with you and you can engage with other humans. And yeah. we've like kind of lost a little bit of that, but like, you know, you could have, she could like so many things could have happened. She'd be like, Oh, don't exactly. talk to me. Like, don't talk to me. <laughs> or yeah, I could have been like, whatever, Ew. you know, <laughs> No, I it's had my so phone interesting. Up, she, I had my phone up, but she just kept talking. Oh, <laughs> is that surprising? <laughs> I talk okay. a lot, okay? Put it on the notes. Put it in the records. <laughs> that's awesome. But well, thank no, you. I think yeah. that's just the that's just the fun thing that I like is just when I really think back on it, it just impresses me how how intensely the universe wanted us to meet. Yeah. And I think that one thing that I've noticed about you, maybe more than Brady B, is that you really have a thing like you you like to commemorate or like it's like a you were the one that had the idea about the vow renewal it sounds like you like to go back to the it's like dates matter to you yeah everything's important yeah and it 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 really is like I'm even kind of like shit we don't even I don't mean we don't do anything on our anniversary you know like or or whatever it's you gotta celebrate each other yeah you gotta celebrate and you even if it's a small things like Mm -hmm. cooking a dinner in the kitchen together but like being intentional about it is what it sounds like is really important it's the intention behind it because you can do nice things with each other all the time but when you make those little moments intentional for you for your relationship I really just think it it strengthens your emotional connection of being together right that togetherness yeah I love that well thank you so much for sharing all your little nuggets of wisdom with us and thank you for being part of our photo shoots thank you so much for participating in this podcast of course thank you for having us i would love for the audience to learn like how they can find your band how people can find you if, if you want to sure yeah so you can find me personally pretty much on instagram that's really the main source of social media that i use yeah. it's at b dot like buzz buzz because that's that's just the easiest thing for me. Right. I'm usually always on there. My band is called Live for Fun, L I E F O R F U N. Okay. You can find us at Live for Fun Music mm-hmm. on Spotify as well, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Where uh, Apple Music is it? Apple Music is not iTunes anymore, right? Um, yeah, but we're on we're on all the streaming platforms. We're coming out with a lot of new music this year. We got a bunch of shows here in Vegas as well. Really? So we'll be all over town. Yep, we actually just had a show this past Wednesday at really? uh, 24 Oxford at Virgin Theater. Oh, fun. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So making a lot of moves this year. So hopefully whoever's listening, if you want to come out, learn some music, hang out with us, we'd be down for that. But that's how you find me. So do you want to be found? <laughs> that's just, okay if you don't want to be found. <laughs> I have an Instagram that's private. But, <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm not big on social media. He's yeah. Not, yeah, he's not the no, biggest There's no reason to guy. find me. It's nothing interesting. It's, yeah. it photos, it's photos of our dogs. It really is. Yeah, it and is. me. Me and yeah. you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you. If you want to see some awesome photos of these two, check out Electric Sugar Elopements. And there's two different sets. So see if you can spot if it's the same couple. So thank you guys <laughs> so much. I appreciate you. And have a great rest of your Friday. Thank you. You as well. Have a good weekend.